what's up everybody? Uh, Mike and I just thought maybe we would take a minute and uh, share something with you that we've been thinking about, some stuff that we've been processing through. And uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. Speaking of God, For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6 gives us a massive principle in terms of just life and how God's made it. And the thing that it tells us is that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I think that that is the primary thing that we are dealing with in terms of all of this, you know, uh, stay at home order, this self-isolation stuff, all all of those kinds of things. Because many people, they're scared right now. They're they're scared. And, And so as we think about that, there's two primary reasons why people are scared. And there are also two natural conclusions that we come to when we think about being scared. The, the two primary reasons, essentially, that, that of why people are scared, number one, is the idea of control. Whatever illusion of control you thought you had before all of this has been thoroughly removed. What, whatever you thought you could control in life is just, it's completely gone. Yeah, well, I mean, you think about it, like, one week we're carrying on with life as normal, and like, seriously, the next week, all, all of our plans are canceled. We're, nobody's going anywhere. We're sitting in the house and like, it was just, it was like everything was just all of a sudden shut down. How crazy is that? Yeah. It was like such a, it was a split second. Yeah. It's a, it just seems I mean, so fast. The way we're living right now is, it was unthinkable just a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah. And, and now it's our reality. Yeah. I was actually joking with some guys last night as we were doing some, uh, a video for one of our midweek service kind of things, our life groups. And I said, isn't it weird that this is sort of feeling normal? Right. Uh, th- this shouldn't feel normal, you know? And, and whatever illusion of control we've had is gone. So that's, that's number one. That's, that's the big reason why people are afraid. Secondly, reason number two why people are afraid is because this uh, whole virus thing that produces a disease, whatever, however you want to talk about that, death is the real big issue. I, yeah. I mean, the worst case scenario, people can die. And, and so death is one of those things that's really, it's difficult for us to know what to do with. And here's what I, what I want to speak into this, is the idea that um, death is one of those things that for everybody, Christian and non-Christian alike, it's something that, it, it's, like, it's like the Titanic. We're all on the Titanic and it's going down and nobody's getting out of this thing, right? Uh, that's the issue of death. It's, yeah. it's a very certain reality for all of us. But here's the thing. Uh, for most people in the world, they think of death like an accident, it's this thing that just happens to come along. And if I had just chosen some different things, then maybe I wouldn't have been in that position. But the reality is death's not an accident. It's an appointment. You have an appointment with death. I have an appointment with death. That's, that's just truth. That's just the reality. And, and yeah, there's, there's uh, you know, some things you know, that, that uh, surrounding that, like I could worry about death and I could say, oh my goodness, I'm I just, if I, if I die, then that's, that's terrible. So I'm just going to worry about this. And real, the reality is that doesn't change my appointment date. Worrying about death doesn't change it in the exact same way that worrying about how tall I am doesn't make me get taller. It doesn't make me grow. Yeah. It's like one out of, what is the statistics? One out of one person is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great statistic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just have that, that appointment. And it doesn't mean that we need to do things that are dumb. Yeah. Like we're not going to go around licking doorknobs in the middle of a plant <laughs> pandemic. Like let's not do yeah. that. Let's you, be wise. <laughs> you can move your appointment up, right? You, yeah. can, you can get to the front of the bus. Move it up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty quick. So we don't want to do that. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have an appointment and, mm-hmm. the, and it's determined by the Lord. And so, um, so yeah. Michael, what are some things that you think that we could practically do in our lives in order to kind of deal with these ideas of fear? You know, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid because I'm not in control. I'm afraid because I could die. What are some practical things that you could do with yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So I think whenever we have fear in our hearts and we're anxious about something, I think a really practical way that we can combat that is to take that fear. So sometimes we have these thoughts and they're kind of floating around and they don't really have structure and they don't have words. And what we can do is take them and put words on them. So right now, okay, I'm anxious. Why am I anxious? Okay, let's put words to that. Let's put like, um, let's clarify in our minds, what is it that I'm afraid of? Yes, there's this, you know, thing that's happening in the world. Let's talk about why I'm afraid. So if you can formulate a thought around why it is you're afraid, and then take that thought and share it with somebody, somebody mature, right? Like not your kids, 
Like, don't go tell your kids all the reasons why you're afraid. Yeah. But take it to somebody. Like, if I come to Cody and I'm like, here's what I'm struggling with. This is my fear. Mm -hmm. And then he's able to share that burden with me. And mm -hmm. we can help each other and encourage each other. And then here's the, like, key to putting words on what your fear is. Is that it's not for you to sit there all day long thinking through. Oh, on let me just it. think yeah. about my fear all day long. No, the point is that we then take truth and we put it onto the fear. So the fear is this. But what does the Bible say? What's the truth to that fear that we can then combat that with? And then the truth is what we think about all day. And that takes us to the two conclusions. Yeah. So here's the two primary things that people are dealing with, these fears. The two conclusions that we naturally come to is, number one, despair. And I think that that's where a lot of people are living. They're ruminating on their fears. They're allowing their fears to control them. They're just diving headlong into yeah. to foolishness and trying to take control and whatever they, I can't control anything. So I'm going to control my toilet paper supply. <laughs> like it's what, what are we doing? You know, that, that is just absolutely yeah. insane. And so we can fall into despair. Yeah. And, and what we end up doing is, uh, we, we, we really get things out of order. Uh, this life is all there is. I've got to squeeze everything I can out of this life. And I've got to, I've got to make sure I just, I'll take from you to give to me because I honestly, when it comes down to it, I believe I matter more than you. And so, so that's what despair does. Despair puts people in that kind of position, but there's an alternative. You don't have to plunge into despair. You can also, you can have hope. Right. Yeah. You can have hope in, in that, you know, I'm not in control but I trust the one who is in control. And so, um, you know, yeah, like I can have some positive thoughts and I can think good things, but for me, that's not going to give me the hope I need to get through a trial. Mm -hmm. I need to know that my trust is placed in somebody that's above all of this, mm -hmm. who has my best interest, who wants to bless me, who loves me. And that's where I put my hope. And yeah. if I put my hope rightly on him, on the Lord, then I can be secure in the fact that my eternity is, is, um, is secure with him. Yeah. And, you know, in this, that hope is to say, I'm going to trust in somebody who, who can take even bad stuff yeah. and make good out of it. Right. That's, that's where hope is, is rather. And that's really what we're talking about with the Hebrews 11.6. Yeah. That our faith, that, that it, it takes faith to, uh, to be pleasing to God. And so here's the thought. Here's the encapsulated thought. A, a hope, a faith that is rightly placed yeah. is only placed in Jesus. Yep. And so that's what I want to encourage you with today is where is your hope being placed? Is your hope being placed in things returning back to normal? Is your hope being placed in, I hope I don't get this uh, virus? Is your hope being placed in, I, I hope that uh, my government check comes faster? Uh, yeah. What's your hope being placed in? Because right. if it's not being placed in Jesus, it's, it's wrong and it's going to fail you. But a hope that is placed in Jesus, that's a sure, steady, yeah. sure, secure faith. Yeah. Remember, ultimately, the Lord is your protector. The Lord is your provider. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has your um, your eternity in his hands. And so that's that's the best. Like, I'll, I'd rather trust in that. Bank, bank on that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, well, God awesome. bless you guys. It's good to yeah. be able to talk to you today. Have a great day.